obviously, first of all, it's very difficult to win two regular season games against uh, against Kent Hard. I, um, I asked our Dobo told me the last time it was 2012 so it was nine years ago. Um, so certainly grateful for that. You know, happy for Zips Nation, happy for our players that put a lot of work and effort into this. I thought that the first half was about as well as we've played all year defensively. I thought the last 15 minutes of the first half were about as good as we played offensively. And so that last 15 minutes of the first half was pretty neat to see. And I thought we really, really played at a super high level. Um, obviously, we were not very good in the second half, but I told him I'd... <laughs> I'm going to let them enjoy this one, and we'll address that on uh, on Sunday when we get back together after a day off. What was – obviously, you like to win, obviously. But what was more important tonight, the win or the how they responded? Because you've given them credit for good losses. I, going back to NIU, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So how important was it the way they responded tonight? I think it was important. Now, I mean, I'm going to, you know, obviously I just said the first, last 15 minutes in the first half, we were terrific. The second half, we stunk. They weren't very good. I mean, we just, I didn't think we played very intelligent. Uh, we turned the ball over nine times in the second half. We missed free throws. I thought our ability to uh, execute uh, time and score late in the, in the game was not very good. Um, I thought our decision-making was not very good. Uh, they scored 10 out of 15 shots to start the second half, and seven or eight of them were layups. I thought that was poor uh, on our part. We just weren't as locked in defensively. I thought the way we started the second half, I always feel like, you know, when you got a 20-point lead at halftime, George, I think the first four minutes of the second half is huge. And we just didn't come out with enough bite. You know, I was really disappointed. As much as I was really impressed with the way we played the last 15 minutes of the first half, I was equally as disappointed in the way that we played in the second half. Now, you know, it's a rivalry game and we, you know, those kids give Kent credit when they got behind, they kept fighting, cut it to a five point deficit with under two minutes to play. And uh, our guys made enough plays there at the end, obviously to, to finish the game off, which was encouraging, but uh, you, we can't do that. You can't play, you know, 20, 25 minutes of a 40 minute game as you, as you uh, now are in February and starting to approach March you know, we, we've got to be better than that, um, you know, but give Kent's kids credit for continuing to fight in the second half. You hit on a lot of things, but would, would you say that, that, you know, I, I have you at a, at Kent at a 16-8 run in the final 8-0-3 of the, the second half. I think they, they came within six points. Was it primarily, primarily mental or... I think it was both, George. I didn't think we were, you know, obviously we jack a three in the left corner and Brian Trimble absolutely was, he was terrific. And he made shots. I think he had 26. So what he had BD on like seven made threes. We don't win the game without him. He was terrific. But the decision to shoot the three in the corner with a minute to go on a borderline double digit lead, bad decision. You know, Christian tried to attack uncharacteristically in a time and score situation. And we coughed it up a couple of times and then, we threw a bad pass from Ali to Mike that we didn't need to throw. Right when they were getting ready to foul, we just we just weren't very, you know. So part of that, you're right. It's what I'm leading to here as I'm giving you all that. I do think part of that is mental, being locked in on what needs to take place mentally in order to close the game the right way. And then obviously physically, we didn't make enough plays in the second half either. I thought they were more physical than us um, in the second half and played with more force than we did. So. That's disappointing, but again, I mean, you know, I'm happy for the guys. I'm happy for Akron fans. I know how important this game and this series is to Zips Nation, so I'm happy for them. Uh, my job as a coach is to try to get these guys to be the best version of themselves and to play their best basketball in March. I think we did that for about half the game today, and uh, it's going to take more than that here down the stretch. Well, see, that, that, that leads into my next question. I mean, <laughs> you see the way they played the first half and it's like, I'll be honest with you. I, I started writing already. Right. And then I'm watching this and I'm like, okay, here it is. You, you played two of let's, let's call it two of, of 
three or four gorillas in the mat so far. You're done with it. You're, you're done with Toledo. You're done with your rival. They can't, you, your team can't afford to, to, to do what they did tonight and still maintain a position at the top of the, the conference. You agree? Well, for sure. I mean, but most importantly, we want to play our best at the end to give ourselves an opportunity to play well in, uh, in Cleveland, you know, so you can't, um, you know, I always say this to them in pressure situations, your habits take over. I thought our habits were really good in the first half. I thought the second half they were, you know, subpar. Um, and we'll have to figure out why that's my job to do that. I, you know, we got to figure out why mentally we weren't as locked in as we needed to be in the second half and, uh, and see if we can help them make a, a few more right plays, both ends of the floor. Last question, and I'll let you go because you're so close to home and I'm sure you want to get there. That's okay. Um, are you seeing that teams have to be aware of where Brian is on the court now? Oh, no question. Yeah, no question. He's, yeah, they know where he is. And what makes it hard is obviously you got to deal with Christian in the pick and roll game. And so he's knifing the paint. And we've got other guys that have the ability to finish. And and now all of a sudden it gets spread out and you got to pick your poison a little bit. And obviously Brian is such an elite shooter. And uh, as it turned out, obviously we needed every single one of them, you know, today to kind of get some distance there at the end. But I thought his performance shooting the ball today was terrific. I thought he uh, did a lot of great things for us. What was more important, the, the win or the response from to, to what happened Tuesday night? Um, I, to, to be honest, I would say just as equal. Um, I would say just as equal. And why is that? Um, both, both were. Uh, I mean, both were big. Um, obviously tonight was a big night, and last game was a huge L. And I felt like if we didn't respond to this, um, you know, I didn't want guys in the locker room or even around the organization hanging their heads and thinking, you know, things aren't going as planned or we hit a wall due to the loss or anything like that. So this win was just to show guys that you know we don't fold and. We can bounce back after a loss. Why were you able to bounce back tonight? Um, everyone was locked in. Um, I mean, obviously coming into a rival game, uh, scouting is, is is ten times more, and you know everything. It all comes at the end of the day. It comes down to toughness and 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 the smart plays. And I think our guys are locked in for the most part and understood that. You know, we, we, we came out and treated this game just like any other, but knowing that it's a rival game at the same time. Okay, you say you're locked in. Tell me what happened the last 8.03 when they went on a 16-8 run. I think they got you down to six points. What, what, right. what happened in that span? Um, see, personally, I would say defensive. Um, we allowed them to get some easy looks, um, allowed Pippen to see the rim a couple of times, and we all know how good he is, so... But most importantly, our guys stayed together. Um, you know, when they went on their little run, we seen no one hanging their heads or, you know, thinking we lost the game. Everyone continued to fight, and we came out with the win. Arguably two of the the biggest King Kongs in the MAC are done with for you guys right now. Kent, obviously, and Toledo. Correct. What do you do to maintain focus the rest of the way? You still have Ohio left, and nobody can really sleep on Buffalo in this conference. No, 100%, it's not something you do. 100%. 100%. Um, just approaching every game with the same mindset, um, you know, knowing that any, that we can lose on any given night, um, not taking no team, you know, not thinking of no team lesser than a Kent or a Toledo. Um, when we play the Western Michigans or whoever we play, we look at them just as they could beat us like anyone can.